What up, everyone? MCI EDP Podcast, Mixing It Up, Episode 10. So we are here with the first female guest, Katie Eklund. Yay! (laughs) Sorry. Hi. (laughs) Cheers is fine, too. Um, So I want to say a couple things before we get started, and we kind of talk a lot about why Katie is here. Um. Tenth episode, so that's kind of cool, and the first nice. female. So nice. appreciate you coming. Thank you. Through. Well, thank you for having me. It's yeah, really awesome. Sure. You doing okay today? I'm doing okay. I'm a little. I'm a little nervous. Okay. But, but I know you, so All right. we're good. That makes two of us, <laughs> so we good. Um, so real quick, I do want to say one thing before we really kind of get into this into the interview part. I want to say thanks to everybody that's been sharing the clips, liking the clips, looking at the YouTube stuff, um, getting love. Seeing people on the street literally coming up to me, hey man, you got a show? So it's kind of cool just to be able to see, you know, some things I'm trying to put forth coming to create, you know, into fruition. Uh, so appreciate that. And now you guys can check out all the audio on Stitcher, Castbox, Spotify, iTunes. So I kind of, it's a little bit different than putting music up distribution on a co- on a podcast wise. But uh, so that's all up for the podcast listeners. And of course, you can watch this on YouTube. Um, I want to address one more thing real quick. I know everybody's talking about this. I got my Lakers gear on. Always a Lakers fan about the death of Kobe Bryant. Um, I'm seeing a lot of negativity and a lot of fucking weirdos out there. And and I I don't stand for that shit. I had to shut my shit down for a while because I couldn't even. It's like, how dare people sometimes? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't want to get into the negativity of it. I just want to call that out. But I just want to say the reason why people mourn people like Kobe and and people that have really achieved things are because there's people like you and I out there that are trying to accomplish our dreams and we know how hard of work it takes to fucking get what we want in this life. So when we see somebody do it and they do it at an extreme level and you see how much passion he had for the game, that inspires me and you. Right. A photographer and an audio engineer or, you know, yeah. producer, right? It doesn't, so it transcends the barriers. So a lot of these people that talk this negative shit and have stuff to say, they ain't got fucking shit going on. They're losers anyway. So I ain't really like that. I always try to stand for positivity, educating and inspiring. That's my goal. I don't get into negative things, but I just want to say that about Kobe. Rest in peace, man. It's terrible. And all the other people on the plane uh, or the helicopter, especially his daughter and the other young girls that were on that. So I just, you know, I want to clear the air on that and say my two cents. I don't want to argue with people online. That's not my style. I don't want to, you know, but I did literally delete whoever I seen talking shit or being negative about it because I don't have time for that in my life. So, yeah. So I just had to say that about Kobe. <laughs> uh, so let's get into this. Like I said, thank you for coming. Well, thank First you for having me guest. and finding me interesting enough to be on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so a little backstory about how uh, Katie and I go back. Yes. Um, I never cut things into the podcast, but that picture you sent me the other day, I'm going to show that on the screen. Ah, yes, do that. (laughs) So that was a moment I forgot probably many a days drunk or something back in the day. I don't know. Same, yeah. So my band Infinite Design was playing a show, and we covered a song by the band Cannibal Corpse, and it was called Strip Rape Strangled. It was a family classic. Yes. Definitely, yep. Yep. And Katie... (laughs) knew the lyrics she came up and sang the song with us death metal style so Mm -hmm. i'll show a little picture of that real quick on the screen (laughs) so we go back kind of probably further than we both remember to be honest honestly for real i I was trying to think the other day when did i meet you and i can't fucking remember i just know that we were always around each other so yeah yep and the the um the music scene yep and then after that then when you married brent Mm -hmm. then uh you know he was a friend of mine, mm-hmm. you know, and KPs, and so I kind of was in with that crowd, too. So, yeah, we always kind of around each other. I remember seeing you at, uh, probably one of the last times I've seen you in person was at uh, BC's party, one of those, I think. Oh, yeah, one yeah. One of the September parties. So, yep. anyway, enough about that. I just wanted to say um, the podcast, we've talked about that. You do inspire me. Like, I, I see you work. I see you grind, constantly posting content. I know... <laughs> how much work it takes you know some people just see photos Mm -hmm. uh but i understand what goes into it and like i appreciate that and your creativity you know so 
why don't you tell me a little bit uh, about how you got started with all this? Because even us going back a ways, I kind of didn't know all this. So <clears throat> give me a little backstory and okay. tell me about you. So I've always been, I've always loved taking pictures. And when I was a teen, I'd have my mom um, buy me those disposable cameras. <laughs> And she got sick of buying like seven or eight a week because that's what I would do. And I found a way with the Kodak cameras to manipulate it, take the sticker off, put my finger in one of the holes and take double exposures with images. Then she ended up getting me one of those digital cameras. And then um, I kind of grew into partying and stuff. And so it kind of just fell flat. I didn't get into any photography. But um, about 2000. 15 or 16, I started, I got my first camera, and um, I started doing um, family portraits okay. and births and just, you know, basic stuff like that, and then I it just wasn't feeding me, and so I started doing self-portraits and getting more into conceptual photography and fantasy and cosplay and stuff like that. Okay, cool. And that's... That's kind of what I was telling before we uh, officially turned this on was uh, just your creativity and how you mold those two together. Like you really take your time and build the sets, which yeah. I think is very cool. And then you add some of that Photoshop element and those kind of things on top of it. So it really just layers into this beautiful piece of oh, thank you. picture, you know, that, you know, and a lot of people just love pictures. I mean, you, you do some awesome work. So um, another thing the reason why you do inspire me is because of the consistency. So you've been doing this now since 2016? 2015, 2016, 15? yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is this a new thing now where you're just getting a lot of people hitting you up and, and like really getting into like shoots and we'll yeah. talk a little bit about something I seen yesterday, but is this just kind of of late? Is social media helping you? Is that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I've or? been working my ass off plugging myself into social media just because, and people can dog it all you want. But it's such a good source of getting yourself out there, getting exposure. People that you wouldn't have ever met in your life, you can now meet and people all over the world. And so that's what I've been doing, just sharing and promoting. And sometimes I sponsor, you know, I pay for the ads on okay. yeah. um, Facebook and stuff like that. And um, it's just been since last year that I've been getting like a flood of support. And it's it's fucking awesome <laughs> yeah probably feels good it feels you know? good, it feels good. I, I, I don't think it's ever about like hey i like to see all these thumbs because i want to fucking get this you know you no. know recognition right right it's just like i work hard so it's cool that people appreciate my art right yeah and sometimes it's hard for people like artists to um be happy for themselves and post that they're happy for themselves and post their achievements because you got those assholes out there that'll be like look at you know katie again and it's like no i'm happy like right. I've, i did this you know and it, yeah. it feels good yeah. hey that that's awesome you know you put the work in yeah so who cares what they <laughs> say you know but uh what are some recent things that you're working on now you said you're getting into some of the cosplay i see some of your other shoots that you have been doing um we can talk about crystal yes because obviously talk about that's her. a mutual uh, friend um, but yeah, just kind of tell me about, uh, these few shoots you've been doing recently. Cause uh, they've been getting a lot of love, you know? Yeah. So actually, um, I met Crystal on social media and she's so awesome. And we, we got another project in April and May. We're actually going to Atlanta. Okay. She's making a music video and she wants me to direct some of it. And nice. yeah, so oh, that's, yeah. that's like one of my dreams is to get into that kind of stuff. So Sweet. We're doing that. And then um, coming up, it's so crazy. I, I don't know how this happened. <laughs> it's so weird. But this um, the guy that plays that played Atreyu in Never Ending Story oh, okay. wants me to recreate one of the scenes from the movie as like a 36-year-later thing. No shit. No shit. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's what you're talking about yesterday. That's I seen what I was talking thing. about so yesterday. Can, so that's like confirmed. You can drop that and say. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. It's happening. Sweet. So we're going to put that. That'll be one of our snippets that I put out so we can promote that. And uh, that'll be awesome. When is that? Do you got a timeline? Or that or? is going to be somewhere in between uh, May to mid-June okay. when he can make it here. So you got a lot going on in the summer then. Yep. Awesome. Um, so what do you think? 
what do you think developed your style? Is it just that progression from eh, the family photos wasn't doing it, I need to be more creative? Or what do you think stems this creative? Like, I don't want to ask the generic, what inspires you to da da da? I know that's so every, hard that's to that's answer. Dumb because it could be a shitty day at work, honestly. You right, know it's I mean? hard to answer that because, like, with music, sometimes it's just you drop something on the floor and you're like, hey, that made a sick beat. And then you, it, you stem from that. And that's kind of what it is with me, but also lots of mental health issues, you know, stuff like that. And um, I think a lot of artists can relate to that where their stuff kind of stems from that. Just keeping myself busy and trying to make something all the time. Okay. Um, to yeah, it's almost like the, uh, I seen it the other day. It's like uh, something about how you stay busy. So the anxiety kind of subsides kind of thing or yeah. whatever. And I feel like I'm probably that way too. I even said that in one of the other podcasts that sometimes I probably just work my ass off to avoid certain things. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> so true. Like <laughs> you, if you stay st- stagnant and dormant like I can't just sit there right. and because then I start thinking about things and I'm like oh, fuck I don't want to think about that right now and so you you just put it into something constructive and positive and and then it builds and turns into something hopefully cool that other people enjoy some people don't <laughs> so <laughs> well they always say uh, what do they always say like uh and whoever they is I don't know but they always say like uh what people think of you is none of your business anyway mm-hmm. it's really not you know mm-hmm. most of the no, people that not. got shitty shit to say is like I said the same people that don't have anything going for them so they have to hate on your success you know right. so they're out there but we don't yeah. got time for all that no and I'm just trying to have fun I'm not yeah. trying to I'm not trying to do anything extravagant make make it big or whatever I'm just I'm just having fun So, uh, with, let's talk a little bit about this. You want to talk a little bit about the magazine? Sure, we can talk about the magazine. I just happened to see, like, a post, I think, this morning about, um, is that your first one, or you got some others? Oh, that's my tenth magazine I've been published in. Nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, I've been uh, published in some editorial, fashion, fantasy, um, Dark Beauty Magazine is the biggest one I've been published in like three times. And oh, that, nice. Yeah. So do you think um, you just having fun with it then is like actually more attributed to your success instead of like dictating every second of how you're going to get to this next goal or whatever? Yeah, do you think that I helps? don't have a goal. Okay. That I think that's the thing that everybody's talking about goals and, and it's great if you have a goal, but I don't have one. I'm just like, I don't think me setting a goal is healthy for myself because then if I don't achieve it, I'm, I'm hard on myself. I'm a, I am hard on myself. So I don't set a goal. I'm just, I'm just doing what I, what I like doing. And, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, Sorry. that makes sense. I just, it's kind of weird cause I get a lot of love from the podcast and the podcast is just something that I threw together to right. kind of just, uh, chat with people and be inspired myself to help me create my art that I'm actually trying to accomplish goals with, but it's kind of, funny how it takes off in different ways yeah. and life steers you down different directions so um i do want to ask you about uh jujitsu you still do that you do you did that i mean yeah. i've seen a lot of that before on your social media yeah. how you were doing that quite so a that bit. i did that for three three and a half years something like that i got my blue belt and then after that and i was training like sometimes it was like nine times a week seven days a week like morning and the night oh wow yeah and i love jujitsu and I constantly watch the videos of it still but I had to take a step back from it because I was finding um I was getting a little unhealthy mentally um and getting that ego okay of um beating myself up more than the other person actually was that I was sparring with I was in my head mentally and I had to just take a break from it I tend to get back to it but okay um my mental wasn't very good. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's very important. But I wanted to ask you about that. Do you think some of that discipline in that, though, has helped you in your craft? Just like, oh, hey, yeah. I got to fucking, this is this vision I have, and I, I got to put all this work, and I'm just going to do it. Do you think that translates well? Because I know martial arts do, you know, to mm-hmm. regular art, right? Yeah, yeah. So. It does, yep. Discipline and um, just to keep pushing. And I had great coaches and a great team, and they were always super supportive of my photography and my jujitsu and they're very understanding of me taking a step back and it's awesome to have people that support you like that okay awesome sweet uh so i want to talk to you about uh i wrote this down the ten thousand hours thing since we're kind of talking about the whole process and in how how the art works 
10,000 hours, they say, to master your craft, you know, tell me a little bit about your 10,000 hours, your process, how you're mastering your craft. You know, maybe I know we kind of talked about, you know, a little bit of your journey, but what about your tools and, and your development and as far as that goes? Like, So I feel like I'm always a student. There's always something to learn. And I don't think I'm ever going to master a craft. There's stuff on my camera. I don't even know what it does. Lighting is tricky. Um, before... Um, last year, all I was using was table lamps in my lighting because I didn't have, you know, soft boxes or anything like that. I'm still using the same camera I did that I bought eight years ago in the same lens. I don't have a fancy lens or anything like that. Um, so 10,000 hours. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm always just a student and I don't know how to say this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like crumbling right now. <laughs> no, don't. That's no worries. Um, I mean, do you watch a lot of tutorials? You know, um, like, is that kind of something that helps you out? Like get creative with different things? You know? Yeah, and, actually I've um, recently started watching tutorials that helps a little bit. It helps to have somebody right there with me. And that's where Jerry James comes in. He's your cousin. Yeah. That's um, cousin. He's also a local photographer from Muskegon. And he's so good with this stuff, like technical. I constantly write him, should I get this lens? He's like, nope, get this one. And he's like, this is what this will do for you. This is what this lighting does. This is how you work it. And he'll laugh at me because sometimes, like I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes <laughs> with, <laughs> with the technical stuff. It's more of the creative vision that I have that I can do in post-processing or building the set versus the camera in my hand. So I'm more of the visual rather than the technical person. So do you think that would be a tr transition maybe sometime in your life? Where Hopefully. You, where you, you're only directing traffic and doing post and letting, hey, you, you can shoot this and then maybe you could help build other photographers? Or is that something? Yeah, I would, I would love about, to or? do that. Yeah. Yeah. And Jerry and I have a couple of projects planned together um, where, you know, he'll shoot and I'll edit or... He'll edit and I'll shoot, and okay. we got some collaborations going on, and I'm excited about that. He's been teaching me a lot about the tech side, so awesome. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry's an awesome guy. He's done uh, some of the, the last photo shoot that I did with some of the po uh, photos I was posting. Uh, we're supposed to be doing them pretty soon here too. So nice. Um, I always go. I always like going to Jerry uh, for anything like technical too. I always ask him, and like I was asking him about lights, you know, because I wanted to get some better lights for the show. Eventually, I'd like to get a better lens. So, yeah, he's always <laughs> definitely in the ear. And hopefully, I'll have him on, too, because yeah. I try to get him on. But I know he's in a different place right now. But he's the homie and, and mm -hmm. family. So so where we're getting at is uh, it's, you're inspiring me as we go, just so Thank you know. You. you may not think that. But it's kind of cool that you – you show that you don't need the fanciest lens. You don't need the oh, fanciest camera. You don't yeah. have to have the 10 cameras and the fucking whatever mm -hmm. $1,000 lights and softbox. And it's, some people get caught up in that, and, and they won't even be creative because of the fact right. that they don't have this or that to get going. You right. know? So thank you for that. Thank I appreciate well, thank that. Thank you, so, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's something people can definitely take away with that mentality. Just fucking do it. Get started. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a disposable camera. Just, yeah, you can do it with that, too. Do it with your phone. That's what yeah, I say. Phones, like, yeah, phones are great. Yeah. So, um, to the next thing. So, I know you're very humble. You said you're a little <laughs> nervous, but hopefully you're warmed up now. But I do, I always ask this because I feel like I'm not going to have somebody on the podcast that I wouldn't be able to, you know, trust to ask this question. So, what are some advice, like, it could be for a photographer, a creator, you know, what is some advice that you would give? We actually just kind of dropped some, but besides the fact that it, it just get started and do it, what are some other things that maybe some perspectives that you have on your creativity that you could tell other artists? Um, yeah, we just, what we just talked about, just um, use what you have and don't be afraid to take criticism. And because um, even those those harsh words and stuff can really build some character and you can incorporate that into images. You can incorporate that into emoting certain things. What about anything that you wish you knew before you started? Like, is there something like you wish like it, you could go back and tell yourself in 15 or whenever when you got that camera or when you really had that goal? Like you say you don't have a goal, but you have a goal to take cool pictures, right? Yeah. Some badass shit. So like. 
that's still kind of a goal, you know. It's yeah. not like, hey, I need to hit A, B, and C, and D, and you know, take picture of this guy or that guy. But what if you could go back and tell yourself that when you were started this journey, is there anything that you would yeah, do differently? Yeah, for say? sure. There, there's a don't compare yourself to other people, is is the biggest one. I see a lot of comparisons, and um, it's really it does a lot of damage to your to your soul when you start comparing yourself to other people and other artists and where somebody is at in their progression versus where you're at. And it's like, how could you even compare two different paths? It doesn't make sense. And so I stopped doing that a long time ago. And I feel like ever since I did that, everything just started booming. You know, I'm not worried about what other photographers are doing. You can learn from them, but don't compare yourself to them. Um, the podcast that is about to drop on Monday I had Kadeem Hendricks on and he's a videographer and that's oh, one cool. big thing that yes. he said was too is like you know you're don't ever compare you know comparison is the thief of joy or enemy of joy really I actually is. posted a post the other day just you know that's not my words but you know I always like those words because people do get caught up in that you know especially like I'm a little bit older so I'm like I'm not where I want to be in my path yet but I and you see younger dudes doing it at 20 and you're like I'm not there you know so but everybody's got their own path right you can't compare you know? exactly yep you can't do that that can create uh or that that can destroy your creative flow yeah you know mm -hmm. because you're like then you really never think you're good enough you already struggle as being an artist <laughs> then, you, then you just want to give up you know if you feel like you're not good enough all the time then you just want to give up and then you know no good comes from that so i mean that's a good thing that employers should learn treat your employees like they matter you know what i mean because yes. if, if you always feel like you're never good enough you're just like fuck it why don't i even do it anyway right, so right. i'm sure anybody with a nine to five knows that <laughs> <laughs> so you do this full time for mm -hmm. your income then right yep. awesome that's badass that's another inspiring thing so we i know we talked a little bit about social media um what are some ways uh you you know you or some best ways to build your fans and followers oh I don't know. <laughs> like, that's all I've done. Like, um, just plugging myself into social media. I've met so many cool people that I never thought I'd meet, that I never thought I'd reach with social media and um, becoming friends, becoming pen pals. I have pen pals in Russia. And, you know, that that's a good one, too, is you, you make friends with people all over. And then if you ever travel, you have those places to go and those people to meet. So building a network is basically Bu what you're yes, saying. Yes, yes, yeah. building so a network. networking on social media, talking to people with like minds, mm -hmm. and yours is probably models, things like that, mm -hmm. people that like to take pictures and stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Um, and then just to reiterate and touch back on what we already did talk about, but just kind of letting it flow and letting it go, like be the creative, like you were saying, like be the most creative you can be, and then people might gravitate towards that instead of trying to have this path something you're trying to shove it in their face it's like, right hey, here's my shit yeah like it or fuck <laughs> off <whatever." laughs> i mean you kind of got to have that that attitude, that right? concept though is hard for me because a lot of people like jerry he's always like fuck them don't fucking care what they think and i love that he's like that and i wish i could be like that but honestly i do care what people think and i do care what how they view me and how they view some of my stuff and um i care about their feelings so much that sometimes i hold back on what I can't, I know I can do a lot, a lot better. I've been holding back a little bit, but I feel like this year I'm just going to do what I want. You know, I can't do that anymore. I can't be worrying about if this is going to make somebody upset. And I'm, I'm going to start putting out some, some pretty cool shit. Nice. Yeah, you just got to, uh, if that's what you're feeling and being creative, then you're just holding yourself back if you're yeah. worried about what they think. And, you know, you even said yourself, don't compare yourself to others. So, like, right. why would you compare their ideas to yours? Right. Because you know? their idea is just going to say, yeah, you're right. you know. And who knows? The bad thing is, is you'll never know if they'll actually like it unless you put it out. So you can't, like, be like, oh, that person might not like it. They might be like, hey, Katie, that was fucking badass. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> and if not. Fuck him. I agree with Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> He's no, always I, right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the same way too. You know, I, I try to have a certain, you know, a certain image. I don't, I don't like the negativity. You know, I, I want to be a force against that. Mm -hmm. You know, but I can be negative and I could say shitty things to. But I think we all can. But you know, you don't ever want to hold back on your art. Just put your shit out there, because you know, unfortunately, 
it, we don't know how much time we have. So, uh, I, you know, I'd rather be the person that put my stuff out and people talk shit about than the guy that didn't put a shit out at all. That's you know the thing. I mean? and the, Those are always the people. Those are always the people that have something to say. Yeah. It's like their job. They just yeah. sit online and, and talk shit. Like, uh, fuck. No, I'm I'm having a brain fart. But, <laughs> you know, you can only... I, someone was saying this, and I was... Oh, Gary V always says this. He's like, you can fucking read about push-ups all day long, but you're not going to get ripped. You know what I mean? So yeah. the people that don't put it out, they think they know everything because they watch all the tutorials. That's a great they wait till they get the best camera and all this shit, and they're pros, but they've never even fucking taken a v- one video or one picture. Or to, you know what I mean? That's so, great. That's a great <laughs> way know, to put number, it. Number a lot of the people that you're dealing with. So awesome. What's next for you? I know we, it's kind of funny because every question that I was about to ask, we kind of touched on the <laughs> topic before, it. so it kind of segued perfectly. But what's next? I know we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the the sh- shoot with Crystal. You're doing the shoot with Atreyu, whatever that dude's name is. I don't know. But. Noah Hathaway. I okay. didn't know what it was okay. either. It just came to me by <laughs> like surprise. You're like, hey, know. you're Atreyu. Let's do this shit. <laughs> yeah, so I, I want to travel some more and and get to places there's i've built up a following of people all around and you know i would love to travel to them and get some pictures and i don't really care if it's money coming out of my pocket i just want to do it and um putting more more things out that that mean more to me that i can't be holding back on and um a lot of it has a lot of like shock value to it Uh (laughs) so more some of the darker stuff that yeah, you have. And yeah like if you I mean, look at my self portraits they all revolve around suffocation death <laughs> drowning and rebirth and stuff like that and i want to put more stuff out like that okay um um i don't even know why i didn't even put this in my notes but just touching on that like the makeup you do too like how oh, did you learn you. how to do that and what is that just some shit that that just came out of nowhere like i just was like hey i want to start because i don't want to hire makeup artists because it's expensive and but i i like supporting other people it's just i'd rather learn it myself and do it and so i just got a bunch of stuff one day and started doing it on myself and then i've been doing it for other people and that's just where that came from but i've before that, I've always painted, too. Okay. I, was, I was painting on canvases, so I kind of have a history with, with painting and, and art. So you know how the brush acts and all yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. That's yeah. very important, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't even know why to put that. I didn't even think about that, but I was just thinking about, for some reason, when you were talking in some of the darker stuff, that Joker picture that you did or whatever, that was just oh reminding me. Oh, That's got to be makeup. one of my favorite pictures the, I've ever done. Yeah, that, like, I... I I like all your stuff because I like that creative extra added layer yes. of things. You know, thank you. That pic, those pictures actually reached the makeup artist that did Joaquin Phoenix's makeup. No shit. And she, and I know it's not that big of a deal, but to me, she saw me on social media and liked it. And like, I know for people that's not a big deal, but for me, that came into existence in her mind for a second. My makeup came, you know existed to her for a yeah. second and it made me feel good yeah. <laughs> that I mean, made me feel so good <laughs> that, that, that makes sense that's awesome <laughs> let me and uh talking about post real quick before we kind of wrap this mm-hmm. thing up photoshop mm-hmm. i mean that's a whole fucking bear within itself and i know that's uh <laughs> i know that's a ten thousand hour process because i do some shit on photoshop i'm not even really good at it i fuck around with it a little bit like I wouldn't even say I'm proficient, but I do all my own graphics because it's expensive to hire people to do all your graphics and expensive for people to do your yes. video. And all, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'd rather just be doing my main shit too. But uh, what about Photoshop? How, how'd how that all come about? And you just fucking with that so too? Or? I got Photoshop a long time ago. It was like 2000 and, um, 2006. And that was before there was even YouTube tutorials. And so I was just... I'd just get in it and I'd mess around with it. And I I literally learned everything I know about Photoshop myself just by clicking buttons. And so I do I um, edit in such an unorthodox way. It doesn't make sense, but it works. And when I watch YouTube tutorials, I'm like, man, they're taking forever to do this when I could do this in two minutes. It's probably not the right way to do it. I'm probably doing it the wrong way but 
I can't follow YouTube tutorials on Photoshop because it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, it's, I don't even know what half the stuff they're doing is, but it works for me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just, once again, making the most out of the tools that you have and using it to your, yeah. your specifications. Yeah. And you know? um, Jerry came to me and he's like, would you ever, you know, um, we could do a, uh, was it a group, um, not a group shoot, but like a, what's that word? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Where you teach people. Like, a, um, I know he did one just recently too. A workshop. So workshop. Yeah, Jerry yeah. came to me and wanted to do a workshop and asked if I'd, um, maybe be interested in teaching people Photoshop. I'm like, I'll teach him all the wrong fucking things. Cause I do things my way. And, they're gonna be like, "What is she doing?" <laughs> so, right. so I said I turned that down because I'm not com I'm not like confident in my um, teaching skills or my my Photoshop skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you do what works and you do yeah, what looks good. Yeah. And, you know, Thank you. Uh, I mean, it, it looks badass. I wouldn't be like, "Man, she don't know what the fuck that that ain't how you layer that or whatever." It, it doesn't. Nobody looks at that. You know, <laughs> even with the podcast, I got this camera over here, right? And I, and this is my good camera, so this is what I usually look into. This was nowhere near as good, but I still put it in there just because it's like, hey, it's part of the, it makes it what it is. It gives it its charm. You know? right. Not everything has to be uh, perfect, and it never will be, so just do it, work with what you got, you know? Yeah. So anything you would like to speak on? Like, this is your time to kind of, you know, I don't know how many, like, actual audio interviews you've done. About I've it, never, this know? is my first one, and so nice. I think. <laughs> nice. Well, um, you're my first female on the podcast, so that's that's cool. That's awesome. And we're gonna. I'm gonna have some more. I got more people in mind or whatever. But uh, I really appreciate you coming on. But is there anything you want to clear the air about? Anything you want to say about? And excuse me. I'm sorry. I kept calling you Katie because I personally know you. But it's horns and halo yes, photography. Yes, horns and halo so photography. I don't know. That was dumb as shit of me to not say that at the <laughs> beginning. But that's all good. Thank you. It was Eklund photography. Then I had to turn it to something that meant more like personal to me. And um, so I picked horns and halos because I've always wanted that. And I love like the the like in my images and I love the dichotomy between like good and evil and ugly and beautiful and stillness and movement and just so that's why I picked that nice I, th I think it fits well the thank compare you. and contrast I yeah that's yep. awesome thank you um yeah so anything you want to clear there about about except for me not saying your fucking name <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> I quit <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like that's one thing I wanted to say was what the fuck are you talking about who is you this quit lady this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard when you got friends on here because you're just like, oh, you just start bullshit like you know old times or whatever. So yeah, no, nothing. No. Just, no, okay, <laughs> sorry. Well, don't, don't let me put. Don't let me uh, <laughs> ruin that chance. It's hard to talk about <laughs> myself, you know. <laughs> well, that's a humble thing to say. A lot of people are like, yeah, I would love to come talk about myself no. for a while. <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we're here to do that. So. Social media, what is it? Uh, especially because that's your your main uh, flow of mm -hmm. the traffic. Because you don't you don't have a website or anything right now. No, anything, I should or? be getting one. Jerry's gonna help me out with that, hopefully. Um, and then I'm planning to do some blogging about things, about my process of um, making sets and making wardrobe, and sewing new outfits and makeup and all that stuff. And um, so my Instagram is at horns and halos photography okay and my facebook is just horn, horns and halos photography <laughs> that's the way it used to <laughs> Pretty be simple, easy yeah. on all platforms mm -hmm. for people to uh see but yeah i'm actually looking forward to seeing what more stuff you come out with i'm looking forward to seeing some of that vlogging stuff and what you and jerry do so i'm i'm excited to see that you know i'm and i'll be honest mm -hmm. like i get tired of seeing another picture of a fucking lighthouse sorry guys i mean <laughs> i know what you know what you're doing you probably don't want to hear another podcast you don't want to fucking hear another uh beat or another there's only like so many pictures products. you can take but yeah i just I, i've seen the ice on lake michigan by now i'm fucking 38 i've been here for a while so yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh uh and we are going to wrap this up, but I do got one more question. So that's just nothing that's – you're just mostly focused on models with your photography, right? Yeah. Well, I was self-portraits, you know. Um, and then, yeah, models now. Like, I got a lot of models, you know, wanting to shoot with me. And some I have to turn away. Some right. some I'm cool with, you know. Yeah. Not yeah. all money's good money. I don't understand No, that. no. People, people, <laughs> need to, and people need to understand that artists don't owe people anything. Like, you don't have to work with somebody just because you're, you're a service. You don't have to do it. And I, we have every right to be like, mm, I'm not going to mess with you. 
So. Hey, I do that with the studio because that's why I don't even want to record people anymore. <laughs> you know, I have all this equipment here Ooh, that I should man, be recording I tell people, you. but it's just a lot of times where it's like I ain't even worth the hassle. So yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So horns and halo photography on Instagram, horns and halo photography on Facebook. Probably be seeing her website, YouTube, all that pretty soon. But uh, go follow Katie. Check out her art. I I tell a lot of people about it honestly. On uh, when I was telling some of the people, artists and shit coming through here, I'm just like, you know, got this podcast coming up. Some of the artists I work with, you really got to check out Katie. So um, thank you very just much. really like I'm inspired by your work, your consistency, and uh, keep it going. I know it's frustrating. We kind of talked about that a little bit. I know it can be frustrating as a creator in general but uh you do inspire me and thank, thank you for you so your much. time and coming over so yeah thank you all right yeah. much love to you you guys uh like i said you can see us on youtube you can watch this you'll probably see the last two podcasts come up on the screen right now and then check us on spotify itunes appreciate it if you guys subscribe even rate the podcast because that helps me get my feet off the ground this is only the 10th episode but i hope to keep this thing going and hopefully educate and inspire y'all so much love to you guys and Peace. Eat it, peace, peace.